So this video is a little bit personal. My eldest daughter, nine years old now, is starting to ask me on how can I become a games developer or how can I learn how to make games? And if she's asking, most likely a lot of parents out there are going through the same things where their kids get hit a certain age, they love games, they love to play games, and now they're asking, how can I become this thing that I'm playing because it feels so much fun? And since I've been working in the games industry for 20 plus years, from indie projects to AAA projects and everything in between, I figured I sit down and share exactly what I did tell her because it might help some parents out there that find themselves in the situation at this point in time. Now, just to be clear, this isn't about pushing your kids to be the next indie sensation or work in the next AAA studio. It's about supporting them for their age in an appropriate way that hopefully pushes them and supports them in their curiosity about the game making process. So if your kids say things like, I would like to make a game like Minecraft, or how do I build my own levels, this video is for you. We will go to different tools that make sense at different ages, some amazing resources out there that are free, and how to guide your child's learning without being a tech expert. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hello and welcome to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Harvey Newman and I like to share my passion for game making, game playing and everything in between here in this channel with all the experience that I've gathered through the years. Now this one is special for me because um, I have two daughters. One is about five years old, the other one is about nine years old and they are growing at different rates and learning different things and have, having passions of their own. My eldest, Jasmine, she actually really likes games. She loves games with a passion. She loves to watch me playing games. She loves to play games. She's really curious about tech and I want to make sure that I support her in this journey because I know where I ended up. I don't want to push her in any one specific way, but if she decides to do something similar to what I've done, I want to make sure that I want to share my knowledge with her in a way that she understands and is not overwhelming. So while speaking with my wife, she actually said, well, everything that you're telling Jasmine will be really, really good for you to share with others because I'm pretty sure other parents out there really want to know how to actually get their kids to be future game developers or, you know, future artists or learning a little bit more about games. And perhaps it might be worth you sharing with others, which I thought, wow, this is a great idea. I think I should do that. So this is what this video is about. Now let's start on why game development is a great skill for your kid. Obviously I'm biased because I've been in the industry for so many years, but I do remember the days where I wasn't a game developer and I was actually thinking to myself, what kind of trades or what kind of skills can I get from game development? Because from the outside, it feels very much that the only thing you do as a games developer is play games. And nothing can be further from the truth because in reality, you are debugging a lot of things, you are fixing a lot of broken things in the game and you actually don't play games as much as you think. And even on your spare time, just like any other job, anything that you do for too long or too much, you really don't wanna do it in your spare time. So when you are developing a game, you are building specific skills that actually help that game become better. And because of all these reasons, game development combines a bunch of different skills that are really useful for your, for your kid independently if they decide to become a game developer or not in the future. Such skills include creativity, logic, storytelling, math, and problem solving. And the last one is really important because game development is all about team based skills and there's nothing at least that i've experienced that is more team based and more towards the fact that a bunch of different people need to come together to create something bigger than themselves than games which actually ends up being incredibly good for you as an artist as a person as a creator because it's not about you it's about the combined effort of all of us together now because of these things as you become a game developer, as you're playing games, as you're testing games, there's a few trades that come, that bubble to the surface, right? Some of those are going to be perseverance is one of the things that you need to have as a games developer because it's hard and it takes years for you to build games. Another one is critical thinking. How can you actually kind of like come up with ideas on how to make this in a different way that has been done before? When you play games with your kids, which is what I try to do, I try to get them to think about how certain things happen in a game and what made them feel so good. So, for example, my daughter is playing Animal Crossing right now quite a lot. So, 
instead of just basically playing the game and just following the what the game design asks you to do, um, asked him about certain bits that made them feel great and how they think that the developers put these things together in order to finish in the game. And it can be something as simple as, how do you think a game fits in this small cartridge that the Nintendo Switch uses, right? How do you think the Nintendo Switch reads this card within the Nintendo Switch? Things like that, that basically stimulate their minds to think beyond what's in front of them. So the faster they get this knowledge of studying games not just about the mechanics or not just about the visuals but about what goes underneath what makes it move what makes a character move is it code is it art is it animation they will start to respect games more but also start to be more curious about what makes it tick because if this is what's happening then this maybe might be the career for them going forward now let's talk about beginner tools for kids from the age 7 to 10. So the first app I'm going to suggest here is going to be an app called Scratch. And the app is basically a drag and drop coding app that basically allows you to understand logic and sequences. Um, this is a really easy way for you to understand code and logic. And that's basically the foundation for any game out there. And your kid, if you if your kid is anything like my daughter, um, they might not know exactly what they want to do in games. They just love games. And I think learning about other disciplines helps them a ton. Coding being the base of it all. Um, if they like a little bit of math, if they like a little bit of numbers, if they like to put together, solve problems, I think this is going to be a really good app for your kids to basically see how deep they want to go. Now, Tinker or code.org. It's another one that is a fun gamified instruction of coding logic. You also have Roblox Studios. If your kids play Roblox already, this is gonna be a natural extension of their knowledge. And what this does is basically, it's basically for kids that are a bit older uh, or a little bit more confident and they can build and script their real game. So they're going to be able to actually have the final game. And ultimately, I think this is why Roblox is so popular. It's because I think that there's a whole generation that is coming up now and has come up for the last 10 years, 15 years, that not only love games, but through Roblox, they can basically leave that idea that you can actually build your own level now. You can build your own creation. The same thing is true with Fortnite. So Fortnite has also like an editor that you can build your own games, perhaps not as in depth as Rob Roblox, but I think that this is basically what fosters that game developer mentality that hopefully your kids will have in the future. You also have Minecraft, uh, the education edition, they call it. And this is a much, a much more simple way of you building logic gates, uh, redstone, you can problem solve through level design. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. And if a kid likes Minecraft, this is a perfect mix for them to get started with level design. And then there's Bloxels. Bloxels is basically um, a way of building games with physical blocks um, through an app interface. There's nothing more satisfying than you building a level and then press play and then your character is walking around that level. Um, the first time that happens, every single kid just like their mind blows up. It's like, oh my God, now this, I'm running around this level. It feels amazing. And I think this is basically what I'm trying to push here is very much the idea that once you see that magic, it becomes a little bit more like, maybe I want to do this, right? If you don't experience it, you don't know if you want to do it. So I think this is going to be the beginning of those things. And also, I think these tools are simple enough that any parent, independently of their background, independently if they're actually tech savvy, they can sit down with their kids. And just because you are just older and much more logical, you probably can figure out these tools much easier than they can, which means that the interaction between parent and son or daughter uh, as you build these things is going to be incredibly tight. So when I do these things with my daughter, like the amount of times that she goes, whoa, how did you do that, daddy? I want to do it now. That's basically what you're looking for. So I think these tools have the right amount of difficulty for anybody out there that wants to tackle them with their kid. Now let's move on for tools for kids 10 years plus. A little bit more complex, but much more fun. Let's do it.
So this section is more for you teens, the kids that now are pros very much at playing games. They know how to play games. They love to play games and they pretty much made their mind up that they want to be a game developer. And one of the things that I will say here is the following. Um, you in games development as a games developer with experience or no experience, knowing a lot about other disciplines within game development helps a lot, which means that if your kid wants to be, let's say, an artist in games or an engineer in games, knowing about the other disciplines that make a game as early as possible helps you a ton. So the tools that I'm going to suggest next are going to be very much the tools that your kids can start to learn how the cake gets put together, how the production of a game gets put together. So the very first tool that I'm going to suggest is Unity. It's a game engine and basically um, they have different uh, components that you can add to a, an engine. So they have a, a plugin uh, for called Bolt for visual scripting uh, or they have a, a basic C Sharp which is a coding tool. So if your kid is into code then you can basically go and start teaching them the tools that basically the professional developers are using. And Unity is a much more simpler uh, version of an engine than Unreal. Unreal is what most AAA studios are using nowadays. So if you actually get your kid at a teenage age trying to actually understand an engine, this will actually expand his knowledge, but also allow them to connect with other engines. Now there's other uh, uh, engines out there that are even simpler than Unity, if you actually are into that. So Godot is really, really uh, powerful. Uh, it's free. It's open source and it's great for 2D uh, games. So if you actually want your kid to have that early engine practice, like may maybe Unity is too complicated, too many buttons, too many things, get them to actually start building maybe a small 2D game in Godot. And that's going to be great. There's plenty of resources out there because it's free and open source. YouTube is full of tutorials on Godot. So great way for your kid to get started. So Twine is for writing branch stories and basic logic based games. Uh, once again, a little bit simpler, uh, a little bit more accessible for a kid and maybe a way for you to go in and use it. Twine is not as um, popular as Godot or Unity, but it's a good way for your kid to get started. And if you want something that is less script heavy, meaning that it requires less code, less writing, maybe if like your kid finds it boring, it needs to be more visual, then I think Construct or Game Maker Studio are two great options for you if you actually want to go that route. Now, if you have these things as a parent, most likely, if you're anything like me, you're thinking, where can I find the learning resources for me to learn these things? Because eventually my kids are going to come to me and ask me how to do these things and I don't even know how to do themselves. Learning resources, number one learning resource is definitely going to be YouTube. YouTube has pretty much everything, is known to everybody. I don't need to get into it. This is on YouTube. You're watching it now so you know how it is. Uh, you also have uh, small courses in different platforms. So you have Udemy, you have Coursera, you have the Can Academy, all of those links below, good for beginners and good for early game developers that want to basically make, it, make a course on a specific engine. So if your engine is Godot, there must be a course out there. If your engine is Unity, there's definitely a course out there. So go, go ahead, learn those either as a parent or with your kid or for themselves. Um, and that's going to be a really easy way, easy access for you to actually get in. Let's talk more specifically about the education paths that your kids can have to become a game developer. Okay, so this is a difficult one because universities, schools, colleges out there, they are still new to game development courses specific subjects. What you need to do is then uh, look at um, what kind of subjects your kid can actually learn at university, at co in college, to make sure that he can become a game developer. And this is where learning uh, what makes a game, if you actually has, have gone through that path, helps you a ton. And some of the things are going to be computer science, it's going to be art, it's going to be maths, it's going to be storytelling. And those individual subjects exist in every single university. So you can very much, uh, with your kid, with his preferences, decide what you want to focus on. So if your kid wants to be an artist for games, perhaps you actually focusing on art, perhaps focusing on storytelling, perhaps focusing a little bit on comp computer science, as a minor, not as a major, will help him a ton. Something else that I think is important 
in games is very much important for you to focus on projects over grades. Not saying that grades are important, grades are incredibly important, but finishing things is key in games and working as a team is key in games because games take anywhere between two to five, seven years sometimes, and you have to focus for a very long time with a lot of people, deal with personalities, deal with politics, deal with a bunch of different things that happen within a studio. It can become a little bit of like a you know a stressful situation and anybody that has been working in an office would know this this is why it's so important for he for you to integrate them in a way that basically he understand teams and also finishing goals long-term goals so with all that being said let's move on to the final advice for parents here's what i have to say this might sound daunting to you because it's games maybe you love to play games but you don't know how they are put together, but you want to explain to your kid, know that you don't have to be an expert. Just be curious with them. This is what I try to do, even though obviously I've been doing this. But for all my friends that actually have kids that actually love to play games, uh, whenever I come to their houses, normally I get asked a lot about how, how do I make games and things and I help out. But I feel when I'm with them that the only thing that they want to do is play and enjoy. And especially the Nintendo games, Nintendo Switch at a young age, there's nothing better than actually you just being there, sharing a moment with them while playing something that you both enjoy. There's nothing better for me and my daughter than sitting in the sofa, the two of us just playing something, trying to figure out something. Lately, we've been playing Link's Awakening, the old school one, and uh, both of us are like in front of a tiny screen trying to figure out exactly what is the next dungeon or where is the next path that we need to open. And it's an amazing feeling. So just be curious with them. You don't have to be an expert. As long as you both have the same passion, I think it's going to be great. And if you're starting this journey of trying to help them learn about games, game development, game design, uh, try to do it in small chunks. So get them to actually finish super small projects. So like finish one game room. So instead of doing a whole level, let's say if you're actually working on Roblox, then try and finish one room. What makes this room special? What will make it challenging for a person coming into this room? What kind of traps, what kind of ledges, what kind of objects, what kind of unlockables can you have here? Those things help you to think about design in a really small format. Also, make sure you praise effort and not results because uh, this is something that uh, sometimes get misconstrued in games because games is all about iteration, right? And you can never have a perfect game from the get-go no game is developed out there that they just set out to do a game in a certain way and then ended up being exactly that game in the end. What happens is through the years, the game changes and morphs and becomes better. And then if you're lucky at the end, the game becomes absolutely amazing. But the iteration process and learning from the mistakes and all that stuff that you went through over the years, that basically is what makes the final game, right? So praising effort and not results is great for game making because this is what ultimately you're going to do in the end. And then ultimately let them play with ideas. Um, having ideas and thinking outside the box, especially at a young age when the brain is malleable, it's what's the most important here because the future game makers that hopefully are going to be watching this at some point in the future, they, are, they have ideas that we haven't thought of right now and they will have tools that we don't have right now that will make it possible for them to perform those ideas. So allowing them to actually kind of like go free with mistakes and ideas and things that they want to do with today's tools will mean that when they get tomorrow's tools, they're going to be even better. So let them play, let them make mistakes. That is what game making is all about. All right. So if you are a parent, if you have kids and you are in this situation, let me know down below if you have any questions about anything that I said here. Did I miss anything? If I did, ask down below. I'll make sure to clarify it. And if you're in this wonderful position that I am right now, where your kid is actually passionate about something that you do, in this case, games, consider yourself lucky. I kind of hope that my daughter just becomes a games developer in the future, but I am not certain and I'm not going to push it. At the moment, she shows she's showing interest, so I'm gonna show her how it is and why is this so special, and hopefully it will last for the rest of her career. And if it doesn't, you know, I tried my best, and I think that's all we can do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. And until the next one, stay well, stay safe, peace. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, go ahead and hit the like button. If you super enjoyed it, leave a super thanks. It's like leaving a little tip and it directly supports the channel. 
If you haven't already, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you can continue to see my videos and get your weekly dose of better life.